What is it really like mining cryptocurrencies in 2022? A lot of people talk about making crazy profits. Other people think that mining is destroying the environment. Other people say that it's over, it's not worth it. It's just a waste of time and money and electricity. Well, as someone who mines cryptocurrency full time this year, last year and the year before and the year before and the year before and the year before and I lost track maybe even the year before that. Well, that's what we're gonna be talking about. Is, is it like worth it? Has it been worth it? What's it like? And if you're on the fence of either just rendering judgment on it or thinking about getting into it, well, let's talk about it. The cryptocurrency mining landscape has changed drastically over the years, but I'm not really even gonna focus on the recap. At this point, kind of, who cares? What's it like now? So with that in mind, let's talk about some new things, some exciting things, right? So mining helium, super profitable, easy to start, easy to use, quiet. These devices are small. They don't make any noise. They barely use any electricity. I'm talking like five bucks a year, not a month, not a day, a year. Okay, these little devices. Um, there's a lot of manufacturers. A lot of manufacturers are actually trying to cash grab. Some have been accepting orders for a year and haven't delivered miners. That's called an interest-free loan. That's kind of an issue. Okay, so we wholeheartedly only recommend the Bobcat Miner 300. It's the miner you get the fastest. And above all, it's the miner that you will actually get. If you look for a shortcut, one of these resellers, well, congrats, you might get scammed. If you go on eBay, you can get one for a higher than retail price. Okay, well, you're supporting scalpers and you're kind of perpetuating this whole cycle of buy a bunch of miners and then scalp them and instantly double, triple your money. You can run the numbers, figure it out, do whatever you want to do. But the bottom line is, is that mining crypto with radio waves as they build out the biggest decentralized network ever and incentivize their users, their miners in doing so, it's, it's pretty freaking cool and interesting. This is a newer development and it's only became popular over the last year. But there's also all the other types of mining, CPU mining, FPGA mining, GPU mining, and ASIC mining. Which one do you wanna talk about first? Well, this is recorded, so I'm just gonna have to guess. All right, so let's talk about one that I can address quickly and I can wholeheartedly not recommend. That's gonna be FPGA mining, Field Programmable Gate Array. It's kind of like a graphics card on steroids, except for every coin you wanna mine, you're gonna have to pay someone not only an upfront fee to get their bitstream, which is basically the mining software for these that you need to mine coins. Then there's also gonna be a huge dev fee attached that they're, they're constantly gonna tax you on top of that. Basically, it's the most advanced form of mining, least user-friendly, the most relevant to like the boys club, right? You gotta be in the club, you gotta find the server, you gotta know the developer to get the best bit streams, and you gotta pay them um, or be great friends and whatever else. It, it, it's absolutely miserable. If you want a hobby that loses you money, there it is, FPGA mining. Enter the next thing to quickly talk about, CPU mining. How about that one this year? Well, the only coin that's really ever championed CPU mining, it had a power play pivot move, making their own new mining algorithm to bring it back to CPU mining as other miners infiltrated their network would be Monero XMR. And they lead the way as just being the top coin to CPU mine for the most CPUs. There are some alternatives, but they basically fall into the category of spec mining. And I'm not talking about respect, putting spec on my name, all right? Put some respect on my name. When y'all saying my name, put some respect on it. I'm talking about speculative mining, which that's another day, another topic, another video. Basically, CPU mining is not really profitable and hasn't been any time recently. But you can spec mine and hopefully have a big payday. We have done that with great success, fortunately. But again, it was a gamble. It paid off. But you should always opt in for a rise in CPU and put it on CPU mining. Any money made, coins mined, gained, acquired, well, that's an increase. If we break mining down to a dollar point of view, right? If I'm, as long as I'm mining more dollars worth of cryptocurrencies than I'm spending in electricity, I'm gonna be mining the whole time. Okay, because if you're mining a dollar, but you're spending a dollar fifty in electricity, why wouldn't you just buy a dollar fifty of cryptocurrency? Sure, you can run it off and expense it, and there are some ways you can kind of game the system depending on you know your rules, your regulations, and all that. But again, that's very advanced level stuff. Okay, now I've got GPU mining. We'll wrap it up with ASIC mining at the end here. GPU mining, graphics card mining. It's changed a lot. LHR, light hash rate cards. It's 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 weird. I find that 
that level of intervention from this manufacturer level, to be honest, disgusting. And it really ruins the utility of a graphics card for I can game with this, I can mine with it, I can sell it to a miner, I can sell it to a gamer. People think it's good if they don't know, but when you really look at it from a deeper point of view, it comes down to just in a level kind of control and censorship. It's an issue, and anyone who likes that stuff is just a naive sheep gamer and missing out on this, this huge opportunity of cryptocurrency. But is GPU mining still a huge opportunity? I don't think so. I, I, actually, I know it's not, in my opinion, at the current trajectory, which I guess I would say that I can't say I know because I, 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 I sincerely think, right? And look, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm not trying to be a hater. I love GPU mining, GPU rigs, tinkering. It's so fun. It's so engaging. Build PCs. You can use them for gaming. You can use them for editing, right? You could build a 6X GPU mining rig, right? So you, you load up six, five extra graphics cards on it over, say, like a typical gaming PC that normally just has one GPU or one graphics card, right? And so you can use it to video edit. You can use it to play your favorite games. And then you get off you know activate that's a little bit too much like an explosion but I don't, I don't know my sound effects left today but um my point is that you can activate the mining software when you get off and now you're hashing away you're earning passive income you got a robotic employee you're making money 24 7 365 you're stacking up crypto coins okay sell the coins for dollars if you got paper hands stack those coins up and hold them for the next all-time high and cash in make some profits be happy rejoice here's the tip okay you want a tip look i can't give financial advice but i can give tips and speak on my experience when coins hit new all-time highs that's definitely one of one of the good times to sell and sure when they hit a new all-time all high maybe they're going higher maybe they're going to hit the moon yeah maybe but if your buy-in is great and it's low and you've been stacking coins with mining or you bought the dip and all that stuff those are great opportunities to take profits too many people get sucked up in all the greed and they miss all of these easy money making opportunities they ride it up and they ride it down and now they're pissed now they're sad now they're grumpy now they're toxic now they're negative now they're hating on you know people on social media instead of just doing some introspection to be like dang where did i go wrong well you got greedy that's most of your mistakes in cryptocurrency whether that's getting into mining and building out a bunch of mining rigs and, and taking profits with these coins or whatever else whatever your goals are whether you know even just taking profits into more bitcoin right if you're here to stack up the most bitcoins you're here to stack up the most dollars or ether ethereum right whatever you want to do most of your mistakes when you actually start to really drill it down if you take if you go to that level which you should you will realize that most of your mistakes are all either based off of being greedy or lazy you hold the keys to your destiny make the plays or sit on the sidelines and cry it's your choice but anyway get back to video topic here gpu mining i mean look i i actually absolutely love the concept of it and it's what got me into crypto you know all the backstory whatever not even jump, jumping in that today but i love crypto love mining graphics card super cool but the landscape has changed. There's no interesting GPU mineable coins. There's no coins launching that are GPU mineable, or even mineable. You know, mining is not looking like the, it's, it's looking worse than ever, to be blunt, right? All of the exciting new coins of the previous market cycle, they were all proof of stake. They were all ETH killers, but none of them were killing ETH mining. Well, actually they did from the beginning because they were never mineable, all right? They were the Solana, the... You know, even Cardano is not new, but that had a big run, right? We look at Phantom, we look at Avalanche, we look at, you know, Binance Smart Chain. We look at all of these alternatives to Ethereum kind of doing more or less the same thing. Not one of them was mineable, all right? And if even a single one had been mineable, it would have been a gold and just mining glorious, you know, profit coin fest. But that wasn't the case. Why that is not even the point or topic of this video. The fact is, is that that, that is the fact. That's the, the, that's the situation. Okay, and Ethereum is actively moving to work towards uh, proof of stake, Ethereum 2.0, and merge the change, which is basically the, halt, the, the end, the, the death of Ethereum 1.0, which is the proof of work, which is the mineable chain, which will basically bring, it's, it's, it's the, it's, I'm the doomsayer, right? Is that, am I using that term right? It, it's, it's the omen of doom. It's the end. It's the apocalypse for GPU mining and, and, and at least at a minimum, the short term. So yeah, I don't, I don't really recommend GPU mining right now, but I don't know everything. So maybe, maybe you know more than me, 
um, or you're gonna, you know, roll the dice and gamble and you win. So I look, you do whatever you want to do. It's like it's it's your life, it's your decision, it's your stuff. I still think it's a lot of fun to build out a gaming PC that you mine with. I have all the graphics cards in my house, in my farm, plugging away on mining. Um, don't misunderstand, like you know, I'm putting these things to work, but uh, I'm not over here building out, you know, another 12x GPU mining rig, and then another 12x GPU mining rig, and then another 12x GPU mining rig, like I was previously. And well, these are kind of the reasons for that. Enter the next chapter. ASIC Mining, application specific integrated circuit miner. It's a purpose built machine. These are specialized chips. They are the best at what they do, but they only do one thing, and that's mining cryptocurrency, specifically one cryptocurrency mining algorithm. We've said it many times here on the channel, and yet we say it again. It's like I turned myself into a meme. <sighs> Was that my destiny? There are some interesting coins that are ASIC mine that have appreciated a lot in price over the last year, that have interesting futures that are basically pivoting to be ETH competitors, Ethereum competitors, you know, moving to the world of DeFi, decentralized finance, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, and just dApps and being a platform and, and all that stuff. And, and look, I'm not here to show coins. I couldn't care less what you what you grab and get into, right? But the coins that we've talked about on the channel recently and have been very profitable to mine recently and in retrospect, especially if you hodled or held your coins, would be Nervos Network, CKB, and Kadena KDA. But Kadena is notoriously hard to sell and, and their multi-chain payout. That's some intermediate level stuff. Nervos has been easier to deal with, but has seen less price appreciation. But yeah, those are like the smaller altcoins, other cryptocurrencies that are interesting with ASIC mining. There, there are more, but that's not really the focus, right? Obviously, we need to talk about Bitcoin, the coin that has been ASIC mined the longest and the most, right? Um, Bitcoin is not going away. Bitcoin mining is not going away. Whatever the media tries to tell you and whatever narrative they want to spin up to try to, you know, just manipulate you to be blunt. Yeah. Okay, just like inflation's transient and just like the government cares about you. Dude, don't don't you get it? Don't don't you do you get it yet? Do you understand that the government is here to control you and being a slave to the dollar bill, the USD or whatever fiat currency, say the euro, I mean it all applies to the same thing anywhere you go. It's just a different face on the bill is that they want you to be a rat in the maze. They want you to be a cog in the system. They want you to have to work. Okay, they want to control you. You can't think about changing things or not being a productive citizen or, or just whatever they, they, they kind of want. You can't, you can't be in the way if you got to work your nine to five. You're too busy to come up with the master plan. And this, they kind of do whatever they want to do, which is a whole lot of nothing. Even the people kind of up the chain and even a lot of the people pulling the strings and stuff, their strings attached to them or they're just like so ruined and a carcass and, and mundane. And it just, it, it's just like, it, we, we live in this world that's so fruitless. And, and we it's ironic, you know, we're like humans are more advanced than ever before. But is life really any better? Let me know in the comments kind of what you think about that deep question, if you will. I'm not trying to get too far off topic again. But yeah, I mean, so obviously Bitcoin mining is here to stay. Ethereum has been super profitable to mine with ASIC miners, but again, they're moving away from it. Enter Litecoin, which has been kind of lackluster at Doge, which had... Dogecoin mining, hugely profitable at the right times and really just led the way for Script, which is a mining algorithm. The only two co notable coins there are Litecoin and Dogecoin, which are merge mined. You know, so, you know, we've talked about like the Voscoin mini Doge miner, which is super cool. We're so proud to bring a basically Tails, which is the cutest pup in the world and the owner of the Voscoin YouTube channel to bring a miner to market in her rendition. Obviously, there's bigger Litecoin miners from Gold Shell as well as Bitmain and some other manufacturers. Uh, but the, the fact is that that's been a very profitable coin to mine and that should always remain mineable as well. And I say always, right? Because when you start changing the base functionality of these coins, you start ruining them, right? Bitcoin is not supposed to be proof of stake. It's beautiful in its original form. It's digital gold. It's not the peer-to-peer -peer digital currency it was really set out to be. But, you know, there are layer two solutions or other things like Lightning Network that are supposed to help. You know, it's a very difficult situation and question of how much can we change this before we ruin it or just make it completely different. And if that's the case, why don't we just make a different cryptocurrency? But then it's not that. It's complicated, right? You know, some people are trying to move Doge to proof of stake. Right? And they're trying to put a cap on the limitless supply. Well, that's kind of the thing. Doge was supposed to have no limit and it was supposed to be a joke. 
and it was a meme coin that made fun of cryptocurrencies in a way, and then it became one of the most valuable cryptocurrencies ever because it had a cute Shiba Inu on it. What a world. But anyway, to, to kind of bring it back to the topic of ASIC mining in this video is that I'm bullish on ASIC mining. ASIC is like the top layer of mining. You can't like, if you're GPU mined, there could be FPGAs getting on your network, and then there could be ASICs that are eventually built. FPGA miners can potentially also compete with ASIC miners in what we normally see in like limited capacity. But basically it's something you can safe bet that like, okay, like this Bitcoin miner will work in three years. This uh, Nervos miner will work in three years. This Kadena miner will work in three years. This Dogecoin miner will work in three years, right? It won't be outclassed. And you can just kind of buy it, set it up, forget it, earn passive income and move on. Uh, they can make new generations, better chips, better technology. And there are basically, if you think of it like a car, right? You've got this car, it's got 200 horsepower, you know, gets you around, but it's not super fast. But then they drop the new ASIC miner, it's got 400 horsepower and a whole glob of torque. Well, that thing just, you know, it's blazing right past you. Yeah, you get there, but he ate most of the food by the time you got there. There's some scraps. And then they build another car that's even faster. It's the same thing with mining. You know, it's kind of like uh, the arms race. Whoever can build the biggest, the best, the most powerful, the most efficient miners, they will win, they will sell the most, they will mine the most. ASIC miners are like the industrialization of mining, if you will, they're not, they're not utility hardware. So, so yeah, that's kind of the situation. That's how I personally feel um, on mining and a few things other than mining. Um, that's, that's the situ, that's the sitch. You forget the guy from Jersey Shore. That's the actual situation here this year. So, hey, that's all I got to say. <laughs> that was probably a lot. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you watched the video all the way through. If you did, please smash that subscribe button. We're chasing a million subscribers. We're on the downhill, which is crazy, but we definitely have a way to go. Um, leave a comment with your thoughts. Hit the thumbs up. Join our Bosscoin Discord server and the Bosscoin Talk forum. They're really cool. I think we have one of the, we have, in my opinion, a little biased, but we have the best community in the world, crypto. And uh, yeah, I'll see you there. I'll see you tomorrow too, because we're still uploading day. Hey guys, it's Ms. Fosk here to tell you about our video sponsor, Lunar DeFi. Lunar is a decentralized finance ecosystem that aims to revolutionize the way we interact with crypto. Their goal is to streamline the entire process of cryptocurrency and NFT investing into a single intuitive interface. So their primary focus is the user. Oftentimes, crypto users have to juggle a lot of different platforms and accounts when it comes to crypto trading and research. There are different logins and addresses, wallets and transfer fees, and it can get complicated. Lunar's goal is to essentially build an application that combines eight different tools used for researching and trading into one single transaction, making it much easier for the user. Their platform is powered by their native token Lunar, or LNR, and is built on the Binance Smart Chain right now. Eventually, they plan to expand to the Ethereum and Avalanche networks too. The token's utility revolves around powering the cross-chain trades, providing more efficient trades, and it contributes to other features within the platform. They also plan to release an NFT collection called Lunar Crystals, which unlocks unique powers for users when plugged into the Lunar platform. These powers include LNR reflections, lower trading fees, discounts, and other features and perks for the user. There's also talk of Lunar Crystals being expanded into a play-to-earn game and live-action video series that's tied to the project. Lunar DeFi has been audited by Desert Finance, and no medium or high-risk issues were identified. You can review the full audit on their website. They also have an audit in progress with Certic. In terms of anonymity, the team said they plan to keep their names anonymous for safety reasons, but they said they do show their faces within the community and have been doxxed by Desert Finance. Their community seems pretty engaged, with over 37,000 followers on Twitter and 21,000 members in their Telegram at the time of shooting this segment. If you want to learn more about Lunar DeFi, check out the link in the video description below. This is not financial advice. Please do your own research before investing. Please be advised, there are scammers impersonating us on multiple platforms. I don't want your money, I just want you to smash that subscribe button. Everything in this video is for entertainment purposes only. That means it's not financial advice.